well uh, hello guys uh, today uh, we will see about the small intestine last time we have seen uh, we have stopped here large uh, small intestine uh, is uh, about one of uh, uh, one of the organs of uh, alimentary canal or gastrointestinal tract uh, it is the longest part of GIT the site of most enzymatic digestion and 90% of nutrients are absorbed here begins at pyloric sphincter and in this at iliosecal and sphincter uh, iliosecal sphincter is uh, found between ileum and sacrum and pyloric sphincter is found between the pylorus and the duodenum so starts from the at the end of pyloric, uh, then uh, end with uh, the first part of the uh, large intestine. So this is small intestine. The main site of digestion and absorption. Small intestine is the main site for digestion and absorption. So the longest part of alimentary tube uh, having three parts or three segments. The first segment is duodenum, the second is duodenum, the third is ileum. So duodenum is the shortest, the first part of duodenum. The first part of uh, alimentary canal is duodenum. I mean, just small intestine is duodenum. So the duodenum is the shortest, the widest, and the most fixed part. It it seems like C-shaped curve around the head of the pancreas. It forms C-shaped, C-letter shape like uh, around the head of uh, the pancreas. It starts as a pyloric sphincter, extends about 25 centimeter, and merges with jejunum. Merges with jejunum. So. Uh, starts as the pyloric sphincter in this uh, extends about 25 centimeter merge with jejunum so this is since it is 25 centimeter it is the shortest it's the shortest but um, duodenum and the jejunum are measured in the uh, in meters okay in meters so uh, the duodenum uh, has no uh, mesen free covered by proteinium only anteriorly uh, covered with proteinium only anteriorly so receive digestive enzymes from pancreas and bile from the gallbladder uh, so uh, for instance uh, receive digestive enzyme from pancreas by pancreatic duct from gallbladder by bile duct so uh, we have two types of uh, ducts the bile duct and the main pancreatic duct so bile duct and main pan pancreatic duct in together they form hepatopancreatic ampulla hepatopancreatic ampulla will uh, drain or submit the uh, the secretions or enzymes into major duodenal papilla after the major papilla it will insert into the duodenal so uh, this is so yeah this is uh, by the way this is uh, duodenum this is duodenum so it's c-shaped uh, uh, appearance so has c-shaped curve around the head of uh, the pancreas so uh, since this is a duodenum uh, now uh, this is a pancreas pancreas this is a tail of pancreas this is uh, the body of pancreas and this is the uh, head of the pancreas so it is the head of pancreas so this uh, duct is known as pancreatic duct so this uh, duct is main pancreatic duct and whereas uh, the upper one is uh, upper one this this one is known as accessory pancreatic duct so this main pancreatic duct with by the way this is a gallbladder a gallbladder this is known as cystic duct cystic duct and uh, hepatic duct this is right and left hepatic ductus left and right hepatic duct will give us common hepatic duct common hepatic duct with cystic duct will give us bile duct the bile duct will with main pancreatic duct will form hepatopancreatic ampulla here then uh, hepatopancreatic ampulla here so this opening is known as major duodenal papilla so uh, hepatopancreatic ampulla will submit into uh, uh, major duodenal papilla uh, will uh, submit into the duodenum so uh, this is the structure so this is how pancreas and gallbladder uh, gives their secretions into the duodenum the first part of uh, i mean this is the duodenum so uh, uh, we will see the further one so the, the second type of uh, small intestine is duodenum duodenum is free part of small intestine covered by proteinium greatly coiled duodenum begins 
as dodono regional flexion dodono regional flexion is a boundary between duodenum and jejunum uh, so jejunum is responsible for mo absorbing most of intestinal contents most of intestinal contents is absorbed in the jejunum so ileum is the final and the longest part together are about 6 cm long so uh, 2 uh, 2 fifths is uh, jejunum and 3 fifths is ileum so from the three parts of the small intestine jejunum ileum is the longest Ileum is the longest, joined to the large intestine at iliopsecal sphincter. Ileum is specialized for to absorb by salts and vitamin B12. So uh, vitamin B12 and uh, bile salts are absorbed in the ileum. In the ileum. So uh, this is a uh, small intestine. So uh, yeah, this is a very important picture which gives us a, a clear distinction between the jejunum, jejunum, and ileum. So this is uh, uh, this is a duodenum C-shaped structure, white one, but this the blue one is duodenum, uh, and whereas this is a pink one is known as ileum. ileum. So this is the three uh, the three uh, positions or uh, it is locations of the three parts of the small intestine. So iliosecal junction is found here. This is second. This is ileum. So this is iliosecal. Uh, junction uh, so and also dodono jejunal junction is here dodono jejunal junction is a, a junction between dodenum and jejunum so uh, here is uh, two junctions uh, and the other is uh, so you can give the give, see you can see the color here the other is the histology of small intestine uh, the wall of the small intestine is composed of the same four coats with some modifications uh, so now uh, the first type of mucosa layer is known the first type of layer is known as mucosa mucosa contains many cavities lined with glandular epithelium intestinal glands so epithelium is a simple columnar epithelium contain absorptive cells abundant mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum goblet cells punch cells so uh, this is a uh, cells which is from the mucosa of small intestine mucosa especially epithelium of the mucosa apical surface of uh, apical surface of absorptive cells have microvilli which is a form of it seems like a brush border so uh, so this is microvilli the second one is the mucosa forms secretes the villi the mucosa is also thrown into circular folders this is known as plicae circularis this is known as plicae circularis so uh, uh, in the mucus of small intestine, we do have three important structures, which is important for absorption, and that is uh, that has ability to in, uh, that have ability to increase the surface area of the small intestine. So these are the one is microvilli, the other is villi, the other is plicae circularis. These three things increase the surface area of small intestine and will increase the absorption in that area. So uh, so this is. Uh, uh, this one is a villi, villi finger like projection is a villi, and uh, uh, large circular fold. This is uh, plicae circularis. So, we, we, if you are sectioned here and it large just like this, this finger like projection is known as uh, villi. This finger like projection is known as villi. This, uh, la these structures are, uh, these structures are, this is for instance lactines. This uh, lactines are important for absorption of lipids. Uh, so, uh, so this is a villi. If you cut this part of the villies, you'll get, you'll find just like this. So this uh, brush-like border is known as microvilli. Microvilli. So this microvilli is important for absorption. So uh, this is absorptive cells are microvilli. But the lactyls are this, the green one, the green one is lactyl, which important for fat absorption. Mm. So uh, the second type of layer is known as mucosa. Mucosa in the duodenum contains gland, which is contains duodenal gland or Brunner's gland, and sub mucosa contains aggregation of lymphatic nodules. This aggregation is known as Peirce patches, and the third type of layer is known as muscularis externa. This muscular external is the same with other layers. 
the other zero so except for major portion of the duodenum it completely surrounds small intestine it is estimated that the surface area of small intestine is equal to 200 square meters or roughly equivalent to the floor space of the two-story house so the function of small intestine is the completion of digestion is uh, the result of collective action of pancreatic juice bile juice intestinal juice and small intestine so uh, digestion completion is uh, collective action of pancreatic juice bile juice intestinal juice in the small intestine uh, the, so large, the other type of organ in the alimentary canal is large intestine the large intestine is the last organ of GIT that extends from ileum to anal orifice so the material that reaches to it is largely digested residue that contain few nutrients few nutrients so a little additional breakdown of food is performed by many bacteria living here even though the large intestine absorbs these few remaining nutrients its main function is to absorb water and electrolyte from the digested mass resulting semi-solid phases semi-solid phases so uh, when we uh, see the structures uh, wider and uh, wider but shorter than small intestine when compared in contrast with small intestine it's wider but when compared with lengths it is uh, shorter uh, so uh, large intestine uh, large intestine uh, over its most of its lengths the last intestine ex exhibits three special features by the way in the small intestine that makes small intestine different is uh, three special features three uh, the unique features of the small, small intestine are three these unique features important for observation that increase the surface area of small intestine are three that are villi microvilli and pretty circularis similarly the special features of large intestine that makes large intestine different is three structures. These three structures are tenacoli, hustra, epipolic appendages. They are called tenacoli, hustra, and epipolic appendages. So, uh, tenacoli is a ribbon, a ribbon of colon. There are three longitudinal strips spaced at equal intervals around the circumference of muscular externa contain mesotone cause large intestine to uh, to crease into sacs called hosta so now the second type is known as tenacoli the third is hosta i will show you uh, the second the third is pubolic appendage or omental appendages these omental appendages are a membrane covered fat filled pouches of the visceral proteinium membrane covered fat filled pouches of visceral proteinium let me show you in picture so by the way this is large intestine this is ascending colon transverse descending sigmoid colon and rectum finally it is the anal canal so this is a ribbon like structure the longitudinal strips these uh, strips are known as tenacoli this is tenacoli that divided large intestine into two longitudinally so this is known as tenacoli whereas this due to tenacoli due to tenacoli uh, fold is happened this fold this fold is known as hostra this fold is hostra whereas this pocket like fat fat pouch is called uh, aumental appendage or uh, aumental appendage or epibolic appendages this fat like structure is epibolic appendages these lines are tenacola and uh, this fold is known as hostra this is hostra so this makes the large intestine different or there are special features so uh, having this concept uh okay let me explain on that so large intestine has the following subdivisions subdivision the first one is second the second one is appendix the third one is colon the fourth is rectum the other is anal canal this is the structures or the parts of large intestine so uh, further colon is divided into four ascending uh, colon transverse colon descending colon and sigmoid colon this is colon so to explain this more uh, this is a second this is a second so this is the appendix vermiform appendix whereas uh, this is uh, iliosecal valve so small intestine give uh, its secretion into large intestine as this area so from uh, from from this boundary above this boundary this is known as ascending colon so this is transverse colon so this is a flexure here 
this flexure is the boundary between transverse and ascending colon this flexure is known as hepatic flexure or we can say right colic flexure and uh, and and here the transverse colon is the longest from the four colons so uh, the four colons so here uh, on the left side there is a junction between ascending descending colon and transverse colon this area is known as left colic flexure or splenic uh, flexure uh, because of it said splenic having its contact with spleen this one is having contact with the, the liver uh, proximity to the liver so uh, the other concept is uh, known as this is a descending colon uh, this is s shape structure is known as sigmoid colon whereas this uh, belgic part is rectum and this is anal canal anal canal this is uh, an external anal sphincter whereas um, this area internal is internal anal sphincter uh, uh, so this is uh, all about large intestine so when we came to the text second is the large intestine begins with suck like second large intestine begins with large, large si like second or blind pouch in the right iliac fossa this is second opening in the ilium of the small intestine into second is surrounded medially by iliosecal valve prevents reflux of faces from second back into ilium yeah Ilium, uh, iliosecal valve is a valve between small intestine and large intestine so contents cannot be returned back from large intestine to small intestine or from second into uh, ilium the other is appendix uh, appendix also blind tube that opens into posterior medial wall of the second as we have seen this is uh, appendix posterior medial wall of uh, the second uh, by the way, having different types of uh, position, uh, sec uh, appendix has different position in relation to the cecum. Lies uh, appendix lies posterior to cecum in the right iliac fossa. Uh, so right iliac fossa is a uh, uh, appendix which is found. So pain on the that pain on the right lower quadrant or right iliac fossa will will suspect uh, appendicitis. So has large mass of lymphoid tissue in its way colon colon has ascending colon transverse colon descending and sigmoid colon ascending colon uh, on the right side begins at the upper end of second and in this at the inferior surface of the liver where it forms right colic flexure or hepatic flexure we have seen forms the junction between ascending and transverse uh, colon the other is transverse colon begins as the right flexure and ends in the left flexure or uh, hepatic flexure starts and ends on the splenic flexure descending colon on the left side and begins on the left flexure and ends on the left iliac fossa and sigmoid colon its s shaped uh, structure begins near the left iliac crest and projects inward to the midline and joins the rectum joins the rectum finally uh, these two structures are the end of large intestine so or alimentary canal so rectum is a pelvis the sigmoid colon joins the rectum which uh, descends along the inferior half of sacrum sacrum bone so rectum has no tena coli by the way uh, as uh, tena coli is a special feature of large intestine but no tena coli in the rectum instead its longitudinal muscle layer is complete and well developed so that it can generate strong contraction for defecation uh, the other is anal canal anal canal lie entirely external to, external to the abdominal pelvic cavity uh, in the perit uh, the wall of anal canal contain two sphincter muscle sphincter muscles the one is internal anal sphincter the other is external anal sphincter internal anal sphincter is uh, uh, it's smooth muscle so uh, it is uh, innervated by autonom autonomous nervous system which is involuntary and external sphincter is skeletal muscle so it is it is innervated by somatic nervous system which is voluntary uh, so in the anal canal mostly uh, hemorrhoids will happen so uh, uh, hemorrhoid uh, is uh, hemorrhoid is a disease very common benign rectal disease it affects millions of people around the world and represents the major medical and socio-economic problem. 
so uh, uh, hemorrhoid is uh, anastomosis between the superior rectal artery and superior middle and inferior rectal vein that surrounds the distal rectum and anal canal it's a displacement of it is a displacement and venous distension of hemorrhoidal cautions based on location hemorrhoid are usually classified as internal hemorrhoid and external hemorrhoid internal hemorrhoid arise above uh, the dentate line and are covered by columnar epithelium while external hemorrhoid arise below the dentate line and are co covered by squamous epithelium so uh, uh, patients with hemorrhoid are suspect usually asymptomatic but common symptoms are bleeding with or without defecation as well as mid discomfort or irritation uh, so some patients need to undergo surgery many hemorrhoid patients can successfully be treated with conservative medication and ointments uh, so this is uh, seems like about hemorrhoid so i'm trying to explain about the anatomical part but it is uh, to you can reach the full slide about this and also you can do like that and you can give uh, you can get some hints or clues so uh, this is all about the small intestine and the large intestine in the next video we will start about the accessory organs of the digestive system which is this tongue gallbladder salivary gland liver and pancreas so uh, uh, till that time uh, uh, have a nice time so don't forget to subscribe this channel to get the next videos uh, have a nice time uh, bye bye